Uh, today we will talk about the acoustic wave equation that corresponds to chapter 2 uh, of the handout. Okay. Let's begin with reviewing what we've learned in the last two weeks. Actually, we learned a lot uh, during the last two weeks. One thing we found that is the, uh, for example, for string, we consider the infinitesimal element of a string that has experienced the tension along the string. And we look at what's going on on infinitesimal element of a string. And then we found that the motion of a string is governed by wave equation Cs square is the ratio between tension and the density per unit length. Okay. How we find this relation? How we find this relation? Okay. We found that any one dimensional wave is can be governed by because this is governed by okay our logical base was that any one dimensional wave can be expressed mathematically like this. Le a right going wave and a left, left going wave. And then we found that this wave equation essentially satisfies this, uh, this all, all possible one dimensional wave. Up to here, we didn't know what the CS square is. And then we consider the infinitesimal element. And we found that the S square is TL over OL. OK. As you can see in the appendix, if you consider small element of a bar, OK, that is experienced some uh, elongation and the compression due to the force acting on a bar, the surface normal, uh, the force which is normal to the surface of bar, we found that the uh, uh, wave along the x-axis in a bar is also governed by same type of wave equation where CB square is B stands for bar is ratio between Y is Young's modulus and the rho is the density of the bar. Okay? So that's what we found. Okay, the solution method Solution methods to solve this equation, and that is briefly described in the appendix of the text. The so one is just find. I mean, just one can be done by based on so-called eigen function analysis. But that is just to, just to assume that the uh, solution so can be 
uh, for example, superposition of, for example, sine uh, m pi over L x uh, exponential minus j omega t, and a n, a n is the contribution of each mode. Okay, depending on the uh, excitation, we have to determine a n. Or second method is using Green's function. Using Green's function. Well, what is a Green's function then? Green's function is simply look at uh, this equation as the following. Suppose I have excitation at, at a certain point or distributed excitation. If I say that is F x t. For example, I have a string that is a fixed both end. This is x equal 0 and this is x equal L. Okay. Then we may consider this is sort of excitation acting on the string. Can I get the general solution, I mean solution that is excited, the string is excited by fxt. Now I want to know why xt. How can I get it? Of course I can use this method or I can think that fxt maybe we assume or regard fxt is is okay, delta x minus x zero okay f x zero integral dx zero that is okay f x zero t Because delta function, note that delta x minus x0 dx0 is 1, right, when x equals x0. So it has sort of same property. So when x equals x0, Okay. This whole function becomes fxt. That is the property of delta function. So, in other words, if I know the the response due to delta x minus x zero, there is a force at x equal zero unit impulse, that is delta function. The delta function physically means that I am apply impulse at x equal x zero. Okay, if that is satisfied by the function g that I call x x zero, x, x0, meaning that this is g, g is the uh, response due to the impulse at x equals 0 at x. Okay? And uh, because this is the govern general governing equation, fxt can be any excitation function or force, right? 